I'm Scott Adam Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leo, Nicaragua. Today I decided I wanted to do something completely different. That's not really true. What I decided was I was incredibly lazy and I didn't get a chance to work on the show until it's the night before it's going to come out. And I am not going to let things sprawl into the next day. That is how disaster happens. So I am doing the episode from my desk, but we had everything planned out. And actually, this is good. I did two episodes for Nika Roomba this week, so I've actually been very dedicated to the filming. I'm not like falling behind, but in this one particular tiny tactical moment we have. Today we're going to be talking about 2024's Where Can You Fly? What are the flight options into Nicaragua? So we're going to get to that right after the bump. So I was told by Patricia, one of the people who live in my little GoPro box, that she likes having the wide angle and being able to see my office and what's going on. Well, it's a total disaster behind me, and we're gonna get that fixed at some point, but not today. So I'm just, uh, we do this on the live stream, but normally I blur it out, and I like, I'm just gonna let it all, this is, this is all natural, this is what the office looks like. This is just, it's terrible, it really is. But uh, maybe we can fix it up just the tiniest bit. All right, now we have colored lights in the background, just like a real YouTube show. So let's get right to it. In the past, we talked quite a bit about your need to balance where you could fly in because it was not too long ago that flights into Nicaragua involved often needing to fly into Costa Rica or possibly Honduras and able to make your connections into Nicaragua because so many flights were no longer available into Nicaragua. Well, that has mostly changed and you really can fly into Nicaragua for most everything. So what are your options in 2024? And I actually went and did some looking up on uh, the actual like flight aware to track down all the flights going on just to make sure that we're not missing anything that's going on. And unfortunately, I know some of you are looking for flights into like Los Angeles and LAX, uh, and we do hope that that's going to be returning in the future. And there is a flight path that currently exists. And just, you know, when you have a flight path, you have to have like all this clearance from all the international flight associations, the FCC and all the FAA, sorry, and all that kind of stuff. And they approve where planes can go. So a flight path actually exists between Managua and the LAX. So that's a great sign that a direct flight path is currently there. It is just cargo at the moment, but it has been passenger in the past. So that that is going to come back and be an available flight path for passenger planes is completely reasonable. We expect that to probably happen. We just don't know when traffic is going to pick up to a point that that is expected. But that is that is hopefully going to be happening. So just be hopeful for the future. But at the moment, we don't have that. Currently, our flight options include only a few countries, but there's a few here that may throw you for a little bit of a loop because they weren't there recently, uh, until recently, um, and so they're worth mentioning. Our main one still exists. The United States is the primary flight destination for flights coming out of Nicaragua, and those flights are going primarily to Miami, there is occasionally a flight to Houston, uh, but that is going to Houston Bush Intercontinental. We talked that sometimes if you're going to fly out of Liberia on Southwest, especially you can fly directly to Houston Hobby. That is out of Costa Rica. It is nearby. It is an option to use, but it is going to Hobby and it is coming out of Liberia. Uh, coming out of Managua. So for most people now, this year, in 2024, flying out of Managua is going to be the way you want to go for flights in and out of Nicaragua. In the past, it really was maybe, maybe not. And there's still cases where Liberia is gonna make sense for really specific locations in the north or really specific airline passenger uh, carriers that you may be you know, partnered with Delta, who's not coming to Managua. Um, so if you really wanna fly Delta, you're gonna have to go into Costa Rica. And there are some connections remaining to Europe from Tegucigalpa, that is in Honduras to the north, that you can't get here and may make sense. But those are basically the only times you're gonna dramatically wanna go over the border is if you're doing one of those specialty runs to North America or a European run from Tegucigalpa, or as I actually do, going on to San Jose in the south of Costa Rica to catch flights to South America. If you're heading to South America, Liberia, Managua, Tegucigalpa, all those are bad. They're all north and eastbound. Um, but but San Jose has quite a bit of connections southbound into South America. So if you're going to make that leap, that's probably the way you're going to go. You could also fly to Panama and down. You could fly to the U.S. and fly down. But it generally makes the most sense to go to Costa Rica for that particular flight path. 
So before we move on to other countries, let's talk about the United States. Who are your flight carriers in the United States? Well, currently, as of the beginning of 2024, we have United, American, and Spirit. These are your three that fly into Nicaragua. They all come into Managua Airport. We also have an announcement that uh, a new airport for Managua is underway. The runway is already there. It is operational if you had to land there, but it doesn't have a terminal yet. So it doesn't have the, the passenger services. So no one's actually using it. But if you were like diverted and you had to land, it would be no problem at all. It's got a working runway. You could land there today. Uh, okay, so in the United States, flights are just those three carriers and just to Miami, or as the people who live in Miami point out, Old Spirit goes to Fort Lauderdale. Yes. <laughs> For, so I, I understand that the people who live in Miami recognize Fort Lauderdale as a different place, but to the rest of the world, Fort La Lauderdale and Miami are both just different airports inside Miami, the city. When we say Miami, most people mean Fort Lauderdale as an airport. Uh, and same way in, in Dallas, when we say we're flying to Dallas, we mean Dallas-Fort Worth, which is actually in Fort Worth. If we were flying to Dallas proper, we'd be flying into Love Field, which is where Southwest goes in Dallas. But we don't say that. We just say Dallas for the whole area. That's how it is with Miami. So there you go. Uh, but Houston, there are flights. That is only on United. I've not seen anyone else heading there. Uh, you also have flights then to Mexico. Flying into Mexico is only on Aire Mexico, which is a great airlines, uh, but basically you're going to have direct flights into Mexico City. I have seen from time to time that there is a flight into, uh, into Cancun. Those are few and far between. I'm looking at a flight list down here uh, as we talk, just uh, as I'm trying to make sure I'm keeping track of all the options and not missing anything. Uh, Flights into Cancun are definitely going to be hit or miss. I don't know if you're going to be able to find those uh, in most, uh, most situations. Once in a while, when looking at the listings, there are flights going to some interesting locations, but generally they must be chartered flights. So we try to keep up with what the actual flight options are. A lot of people like to say, oh, I saw a flight to here to there. But when you actually go to book it, they don't exist, or you're just taking partial legs of another flight or something. So it can be it can be pretty difficult to figure out where you can actually go. And there's no central information for like all flights. So that gets a little bit complicated if you're here. Generally, you're doing all your booking through an airline. So you choose your airline partners that you want to work with. And that's how you find things. It's it, You don't have like a an orbit or a, a whatever, a, a kayak to go to and get all the flights all at once. Uh, we have just, so generally you just have Aero Mexico into Mexico City. Uh, and the, from there, obviously, you can catch flights to all over the world. Uh, Mexico City is one of the most connected airport cities. Great place to use as a hub. So that is an option. Um, keep in mind, if you're flying from Nicaragua, you listening to this are probably from a non-Nicaraguan country and probably have visas that allow you to go through the United States by the nature of me speaking English and you listening to this. Uh, if you are Nicaraguan or flying with someone who is Nicaraguan, you probably can't take flights through the U.S. So I think going to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Houston, possibly even Mexico City may not be things that you have a visa for and you can't go there. Also, keep in mind that they may not be able to go to Costa Rican airports. They may be stuck using uh, only those that are in the CA4. That's uh, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. There is free movement, supposedly, or, you know, in theory, beyond be between that region. And uh, being able to use all those airports is supposed to be available to everyone. Many of them would be very distant, and so it would not be very practical, Tegucigalpa being pretty much the only one that you would dr consider driving to before taking a flight. If you were going to go to the next nearest major airport, which is San Salvador, you literally would take a flight to it. So that makes it a little bit complicated to try to get out. So Nicaraguans still have a very hard time flying, but Americans, Canadians, Brits, Europeans who are flying to and from Nicaragua have a lot more options, and a lot of flexibility. Uh, so Mexico is very limited. We also have, as I said, Avianca flies to San Salvador in El Salvador. That is a, another major flight option because you have a lot of connections. San, uh, San Salvador Airport connects all over the world, uh, generally low cost, um, and you're able to get to Europe and, and all over Latin America and North America from there. So that's a very popular choice as well, especially because once you cross into El Salvador, you're inside the border zone. 
just, I don't know if that actually makes anything easier, but in theory, it should. It is kind of a domestic flight after that point, even though it's not technically domestic. You also have options, like even though it's very far away, you can take a bus from San Salvador into uh, Nicaragua without any problem. It would just be a very slow move, but for, for some reason you missed a flight there, you can just hop a shuttle or a bus and make your way down that way. The other major flight option here is into Panama. Panama on Copa Airlines is a major airport and connects especially to South America, but to much of the world. It is a very is another hub city. Um, that one specifically has the benefit that Nicaraguans do not need a special visa to be able to go to Panama. They don't have to qualify for anything. Nicaraguans are just allowed to transit through Panama. So a lot of Nicaraguans who are looking to travel internationally and have permission to go to an end destination, but not places that are in between. So for example, those going to Europe or South America, often Panama is going to be their, their option because otherwise they have to figure out how to get a visa for the in-between countries. Uh, Nicaraguans can generally move around the majority of South America, but not Costa Rica specifically, and Mexico and North America. So those locations, which happen to be nearby and have a lot of the good airports, make it very difficult for Nicaraguans to move. Uh, so an American or Canadian looking at flight options here will be like, but it's so easy, there's so many things. And Nicaraguans will be like, what are you talking about? There's like no options, right? Um, so, but speaking of that, there are new options that have cropped up and this is pretty exciting that we're seeing new things come. Now, these are not gonna be super popular uh, flight options for most people, but it's interesting that they're there. And it shows that change is coming. Uh, and we're going to see, I think, a bit more of this in the coming future. The big one, the one that's going to be really practical, is there are now direct flights on a regular basis to Havana, Cuba. That may sound like, well, who's going to go vacation in Cuba? Like, I guess someone would, and you meet people who do, but is that a big thing? Does the flight really matter? So going to Cuba is generally not something you're going to do for vacation. I mean, you certainly can, and I would not tell someone you shouldn't. I'm just saying that the majority of people who are going to look to get a flight into Cuba, that is probably not why they're going to go. They're going to go because that is a big city. It is a relatively major airport, and very importantly, some airlines like Turkish Airlines have a stop there. And so that means for Nicaraguans if we, who are able to get to Cuba pretty easily uh, from a visa perspective, if they fly to Havana, they're able to pick up Turkish Airlines or possibly some other, and off to Eastern Europe they go, and then now they have connections to a whole huge world of places that have relatively simple travel for Nicaraguans. So they're able to get to the Middle East, they're able to get to Eastern Europe, able to get to Western Europe as well, able to get into Africa and, and Asia. There's just a lot of connections. Uh, Istanbul, which is the hub for uh, Turkish Airlines, is one of the world's major airline hubs. So being able to get to that is really important for Nicaraguans in a lot of situations. So it's really important. We also now, this is, I've just seen this and I knew this was coming. I do not know anything about these flights, but there are flights running between Nicaragua and Venezuela. This is not something that we've heard talk about. We haven't seen ads for this yet, but the carriers are starting to show up. So that is pretty interesting um, because basically what this is doing is allowing there to be ways for Nicaraguans to get past all these countries that restrict their travel. So it's not that, again, Cuba is probably not a big destination. Venezuela is probably not a big destination either. It really means that there are ways to go more places uh, once you go through those. So getting to Caracas opens up flights into all of South America for the most part. So um, those are our, th th that's it, right? That may seem like a pretty short list, but that's really good for how it's been in the past. We've seen year over year really big improvements. When I was here in 2021, we could not fly from the U.S. to Nicaragua. There was no real way to get here. It was a huge problem. By 2022, we were starting to be able to fly to the U.S. By 2023, just last year, we started having really good connections and didn't have to go to Costa Rica all the time. And at this point, we're really looking, as expats at least, that Costa Rica we might use for Border runs we might use for some vacation, but using it for an airport northbound or regionally uh, is pretty much unneeded. Southbound, it is remaining and will remain for the foreseeable future the way to head into South America. It's unfortunate that Nicaragua doesn't have better South American connections. Maybe if some really amazing Venezuelan connections come up, maybe that will change. Maybe if there's huge amounts of tourist growth, we will see someone like LATAM connect from South America directly to Managua. But those are not things that we anticipate, at least in the next several years. 
So very likely uh, San Jose Airport in Costa Rica is going to remain the South American facing airport for Nicaragua for quite some time. And of course, uh, uh, Panama City as well is an option if you want to fly over and not take the bus. I take the bus to San Jose and then there are charter flights in the region. Um, and so you'll notice in the flight paths, once in a while there'll be a connection from Costa Rica, but those are just uh, charters or flights that are passing through, not things you can actually book. Uh, likewise, we have seen flights into Guatemala City that are connected from some others, and you're actually catching a flight that is bouncing through Managua and going on, but there are ones that are very difficult to book. I don't know anyone who's managed to book them, and they do not actually get listed anywhere as available flights. So while that may exist, and feel free to look, you might get lucky at any given time that a flight may be offered for you. Uh, they are not standard flights, and they're not ones that we would really want to tell people, like, oh, go plan around this, because the chances that they're going to be available for you are extremely low. So you would you certainly don't avoid them if they meet your needs, and they're, they exist, and they're a good price, but uh, assume that the, the flights that I told you about are essentially the entire set of available direct flights. Now, of course, all of those flights connect on other places. So it's not that you can't go more places than what I said. Those are the places that Managua flies directly to when not chartered. You can charter a flight from basically anywhere to anywhere, making life much more flexible. That is super expensive, of course. Uh, so that is our flights. That is it. That is a quick episode today. But uh, I want to keep this up to date every year because people have questions uh, and want to be able to look this up and, and get kind of a from someone going to the airport. This is really what we're doing this year. So the big change is we have access to Venezuela in theory. We definitely have good access to Cuba now. We do not have to go outside of Nicaragua by land transit, Costa Rica or Honduras, for any normal flight except for South America. Uh, and, and we're basically able to use Managua Flexible to those cities, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Houston, Mexico City, Panama City, and San Salvador as the main ones, and then Havana and Caracas as potential kind of quirky, extra little just got brought on side city. So thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That does so much to help make this show possible and everything that we do. And uh, I don't know if I should say sorry for the terrible office background that we have today, but it is something different. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Did my light die? It totally died. I had like one special effect and it died while we were doing the show. That's awful. Anyway, <laughs> I, uh, hopefully this is just a little bit something different and everybody enjoys it. If you have any questions or comments, I encourage you, get down there in those comments. It really does help when you guys ask questions because that's how we find out what we're going to ask. That's how we know what are the current things. So the, that discussion, those questions are really important. Please get down there and ask away and uh, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. Share it somewhere. Watch another episode after this one and I will see all of you tomorrow. All right, we're going to pop up on the screen. There's four other episodes. Just pick one. Go watch this. This is like a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, something that's related. Like that's go use these as a way to support us and find more information on Nicaragua.